should be seven below zero here in about 10 or 12 hours and maybe we'll get a chance to try this puppy out. All right, so they asked me to talk about some of the things I thought of when I was going to buy this. So the first thing was, why do I want a generator? Well, it's because one, you have power outages, you don't want to have a wet basement, uh, you don't want to lose food, we're looking to travel a bunch, so um, you want to be able to protect critical systems. Now, do you want just a portable generator? If you do that, you can just have that. As long as you're home, you can plug your sump pump in, plug in your refrigerator, and you're probably good to go, but you got to be home. Um, and you're only partially doing the house. So now, if you decided that you want to go with a permanent generator, which is what I've done, then, the, then, then you have to ask, do I want to do a whole house generator or just critical systems? Generac sells a number of sizes of these. This is a 24 kilowatt unit, which is the biggest residential one they have right now, but they have them at smaller sizes. And you could choose to save a couple thousand dollars on the purchase price, but now you're gonna to have to spend expense with your electrician to break out just the critical circuits like sump pumps, uh, furnaces, and hot water heaters and stuff like that you want covered. My experience in looking at all this is the incremental price to get to the maximum 24 kilowatt is well worth it versus trying to spend a bunch of money piecemealing a job together. So now, if you decided that you want a whole house generator, this one's 24 kilowatts. The next question is, what's the fuel source gonna be? So if you're out on a farm and you're using liquid propane, that's one thing. In our case, we've got natural gas here. Obviously, if you have natural gas, you're gonna go with natural gas. So these, so these generators, when it says 24 kilowatts, that's on liquid propane. It's derated to uh, 21 kilowatts on natural gas. So these things run more efficiently on liquid propane. So just be prepared for that and that's another reason if you run natural gas to buy the biggest one you you want you don't want to buy a 22 or an 18 that's going to get derated down beyond that and again <clears throat> these can be hard to come by some places uh, there was like four six months wait but i was able to get um mine in uh really only a couple of weeks uh, lowe's home depot or menards but at Menards, if you can get lucky, like I did, get it when they got their 11% rebate, all of the places have the same list price, but I got 11% rebate from Menards. So you can buy your transfer switch on that from them if, if they have them in stock and you'll do well. If you're using liquid propane and wherever you're at, you can have the liquid propane tank relatively close to your uh, meter for your house. That's what you want to do. You want to co-locate everything. But if you're not, like in our case, we have gas and the gas is on the south side of the house, but the meter is 160 feet away on the north side of the house. Now you got to really think about this because this unit uses a lot of gas, enough so that you should expect to have to upgrade your gas meter like we did, and enough so that if this is not close to the gas meter, we were looking with the Generac dealer at spending an extra $2,000 to run 160 foot of gas pipe all the way to the other side of the house. And then with that, they were gonna to have to run at high pressure, one and a quarter inch line, and put a regulator over there. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't want high pressure gas under my house. So we looked at this and said, can we still do it? And we talked to Jefferson Electric and Joel said, yep, what we'll do is we're gonna, we're gonna cause some havoc in the process because we're gonna have to take out a bunch of drywall in the garage, but we're gonna run 160 foot of wire over here. <clears throat> And there it is, a great big wire that comes all the way from the other side of the house. <clears throat> and then that way, now, in our case, we only had to run a one inch gas pipe, maybe 12 feet over to the generator. So, but be, be prepared for some cost, right? So the hidden cost there is, you're looking at 160 foot of wire, and then you're looking at some substantial labor to get that wire from one end of the house to the other. And in our case, we had to take out a good portion of the drywall in the garage to be able to get that over. So unless you're handy with drywall, uh, then expect to pay somebody to you know patch some of that stuff together. So bottom line, what did we decide? We said, okay, we want a whole house, natural gas, you're going to have to plan on the expense of a plumber, right? So in this case, <clears throat> this was a much smaller meter, and you're responsible for everything on the output side of the, of the uh, uh, gas meter. So what the plumber had to do was take off this feed here, and formulate, fabricate all this stuff over to here. So 
expect to be paying for a plumber to do that piece of the work so you got your natural gas. Uh, all utilities are different. In our case, Citizens, uh, who provides our water and our gas, <clears throat> they had me put together a budget for how much gas would be used. And they basically looked at that and say, okay, you're going to use a lot more gas, so your bills are going to be higher, so we will pay the cost of upgrading this meter. So I didn't pay anything to do that. Um, in reality, it's not that good of a deal for them, right? Because you're hoping your standby generator isn't running 24-7. You're hoping that it's only going to run one once in a rare while. So, But anyhow, they don't go in that. They just look at what's your maximum load in the house, and then they size this thing accordingly. If you are considering doing this and putting in a generator, one of the big cost savings and things that makes it work better is if your gas utility and your electric utility are co-located. So if you're building a new home uh, and it's gonna have natural gas, what you wanna do is most likely your electric is gonna come in by the garage most of the time. Uh, so what you wanna do is even if it costs a little bit extra money, have the utility put your gas meter in near the electric panel. Now, if it turns out, again, if you're using liquid propane and you're on a farm or some rural area, then by all means, just put your liquid propane tank next to your, close to your electric meter and close to the generator, and that'll be good. In this case, having 160 feet between the electrical and um, the gas almost caused me to say, I'm not gonna do this project. Again, at first I started out, I'm gonna do this all myself, and then I realized, uh, it's a little bit beyond me. I really need some help. All right, so another thing to consider is, what brand of generator do you buy? So if you look out there, you're gonna see Generac for sure, you're gonna see Kohler, you're gonna see Cummins. If you're a commercial operation, you're probably gonna go with Cummins, but if you're in the residential marketplace, um, uh, Generac owns that owns that marketplace. And so then I look at my personal experience, and uh, 20 years ago I used to have a remodeling business and dealt with people that had some nice homes that have had these, and I've talked to them when I was making my decision. After 20 years, they're pretty happy with it. And that probably says something to why they're the market leader here. Um, and so you're gonna get parts. I'm always about the service. You know, 10 years from now, can I still get parts? So if I buy a Kohler or somebody else, who knows? So the next major consideration is, do you have a dealer do the installation, which is gonna be a one price, complete turnkey operation? So for instance, in Indianapolis, there's uh, several certified dealers. Generator Supercenter is Generac's largest dealer globally, not globally, nationally. And I talked to them and I asked them if I could partner with them. They said, no, we'll just do a turnkey operation. Uh, and you were looking at somewhere, I think there were going to be more like fourteen to $18,000. When I was looking at op options with others, you were looking at twelve, sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 for turnkey, but that wasn't being two, 160 feet away from uh, where we had to run the electrical. So in the case of uh, the local guys, they were going to charge me $2,000 to run the gas all the way over to the meter. Or in this case, Jefferson Electric, we worked together on this, so it was under 2,000, maybe 1,700, to get all the wiring and everything through the house and over to this side. So, um, do you want to do dealer? Do you want to do it yourself? Or do you want to work with a master electrician and then get a plumber to do your gas? Uh, I'm a DIYer, master, I'm an electrical engineer, but this project is not for the faint of heart in terms of, I think it's beyond a DIYer, so you really want to either go with a master electrician, uh, general, you know, a, a licensed contractor electrician, or go with a turnkey thing, depending. My case, I like to have my hands in it, so uh, Jefferson Electric, it just worked out to be a phenomenal experience to work with them on this. So you may be a DIYer, I'm a huge DIYer, but in this case, doing this whole thing myself, I was not sure I could know all the codes and everything. So you don't want to put yourself in a position where there's no inspection and then maybe you have a house fire or something like that and then the insurance company uses this as, an, uh, as a way to say, hey, you got, you, know, you got an issue here that was never inspected and wants to decline you. So my bottom line take is you can have a, an electrician do it or you can have a whole turnkey thing done by a dealer. In my case, I like to be involved, so this was a dream come true for me. And uh, I just really appreciate Joel and the whole team of Jefferson Electric for letting me kind of realize a dream, even though it's a weird one. As my wife said, I said, why are you so excited about putting in a generator in? I said, because I can, and Joel's team is great. And I was like, 
And how much is it going to cost to do all this? And my wife's like, and when am I getting my floors done? And, and why do we need this generator? Well, anyhow, if you can keep them close, it's great. And, um, and maybe if this storm arrives in the next five hours and the temperature drops from 38 to minus 7, maybe we'll have a chance to use this. So if so, come on over and have a cup of coffee. So when we started down this journey, I knew I was definitely doing some electrical upgrades in the house and running a sub panel to the shop. But uh, I did not have permission from my wife to spend the money to go buy all this stuff. So what we did is we provisionally went ahead and put a transfer switch in on the other side of the house in the wiring. And then, okay, we'll see down, downstream where we're at. Well, if you're buying this stuff a la carte, if you buy it from the big box stores, it's always list price. So the transfer switch on the other side is about $900. And then this guy over here is around six and a half thousand dollars plus or minus. So there you got, you can just, you can do the math yourself. You got seven and a half, eight thousand dollars in just that. In the case of the gas utility, the gas utility didn't charge me anything to put this in uh, because they saw they were going to get their money back. Um, but now you're going to have all the electrician's cost to, to wire it, or in the case here where we had to go 160 feet, maybe another $1,700, $2,000 to get either your wiring across or your gas pipe across. And then the cost of the electrician then to wire in the transfer switch. So if you're building a new house and you're even considering a generator, I'd strongly consider spending the 900 bucks, having them put the transfer switch outside at the same time you're wiring your house. It'll serve as the service disconnect, meet those national electrical code stuff. And, and then if you ever decide to put in a generator, they don't have to spend all the time to break in between your panel and all the rest of that. So good idea if you're trying to upsell one of your customers, you're doing new home construction. Hey, if you're ever thinking about doing this, spend the 900 bucks now and we'll, we'll put that in. And then you're looking at the labor cost to do all of this and to wire that in. In my case, we were doing two new panels and putting that all together. My bill with Jefferson Electric was seven and a half thousand or so dollars uh, to do all of our project. I found that Generax um, technical support department will not talk to you unless you're a dealer, period. I tried, I told them we were doing this video, I'd like to show them off in the best possible way, but they would not talk to me. But there is a blog out there, just search for Generac um, uh, installers blog, that I found very helpful. In fact, they're the ones that I also found that showed that the Klein meters don't work for doing the uh, generator work for measuring hertz. So. Very helpful. So, if you're looking for one on one advice from Joel Waldman, Master Electrician and CEO of Jefferson Electric, there's a link below and he'd be happy to help you. And uh, with that, wish you a good day. The weather is changing. It should be seven below zero here in about 10 or 12 hours, and maybe we'll get a chance to try this puppy out. <laughs>